And joining us now is Ann Northrup, one of five commissioners on the Consumer Product Safety Commission, the agency that's supposed to police toy safety. Now, Ann, I assume that this lead law was well intended. They're protecting the kids. Well, certainly. I mean, the Consumer Product Safety Commission pa it has to implement the law as it was passed, but it's not just the cost of re-engineering the product to make a product now that doesn't have the lead in it. It's that every single component, every single component has to be tested. Those labs have to be certified by the Consumer Product Safety Commission, so now there's a big lab industry expansion. And every single product has to carry a certification based on those third-party tests. Is, this appears to have no metal. It's wood. <laughs> this exempt? Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's not, John. You see, see these cute little people in the back here? Uh, see that little bit of white uh, paint and black paint? Each one of those are different components. Does it look like maybe it's glued together? That glue would have to be tested. And then I think that there is a coating on here, a varnish of some kind. That would be another test. Every one of those would be considered a separate uh, component. And All I don't right, know, does this look like it was dyed? Oh, yes. I think that that would have to be have so another test. So this costs thousands All of, of those. dollars. All of those. I've got this uh, stick horse. This is appears to be all cotton. I assume I'm okay with this. I can give well, it to the thrift store. Well, we would have to make sure this is all cotton, but this doesn't look like this is all cotton, so that would have to be tested as a separate component. This uh, fringe here that's so cute, anything that makes a toy cute often is uh, <laughs> something that's not pure cotton. So that would have to be tested. And do you see this cute little button here? That not only would have to be tested, I found the cuter they are, the less likely they are to be lead-free. Even though a child could suck on that and not get any lead out of it, it doesn't leach out, doesn't consume so enough to change their blood level. When they pass these laws, and what do you and why don't you people go say this is ridiculous? Well, actually, the commission is sending up a report to Congress, but you know what you hear all the time is, well, the big companies aren't complaining about it, and in truth, the outpouring of tears and anguish over this are coming from the small toy manufacturers. There are all sorts of people that have, are crafters, they go to, to craft fairs and sell their product. They're the cute things that maybe a grandmother might want to buy a specialty toy. Those will all be far too expensive to test and so those are, the, the choices will be far less, less uh, plentiful. And you came out with this handbook for resale stores, and you know, this, I'm told here, includes garage sales. I mean, what, what happened to freedom? Well, uh, you know, the law said that it was retroactive, and so even if something were safe to buy last year and has never been recalled because it's not safe, it's still because it, it hasn't been, it, what, was, what was safe last year is not safe this year, you realize. Well, and you so, give me good advice. I'm holding a garage sale. It says you may want to hire a qualified trained person in your area <laughs> who can quickly screen all your products with a handheld device called an x-ray fluorescence machine. Okay, solves the problem. Well, you know, to, to the credit of the CPSC, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, we're not sending our investigators out to your garage sale. And, and I should mention this little x-ray machine costs $30,000. $30,000. <laughs> and Goodwill says it kept breaking down, all from a scare based on no children dying from children's clothing, from, from kids' clothing. All of clothes. us want true lead uh, uh, threats to be lead withdrawn. Paint. Lead paint, you know, lead is in our soil, but lead is, is in our, absurd. but this is, this is, you could suck on a lead button, you could suck on uh, uh, a grommet, and a child would never extract the lead out of that at a level that would register in their blood, and yet it's still illegal. Even if you make it out of a product that is now legal, you're going to have to test it, you're going to have to certify it, you're going to have to create a registry. That kills the little guy, but not the big guy? Yeah, the Mattel, the largest toy maker in America who made most of the leaded toys from China, they uh, multiplied their lobbying by six. Six times as much they spent on lobbying. Hasbro, number two, hired a lobbyist for the first time. And they, what did they win? They helped write the bill. They supported they it. They helped write. They the helped bill. write the bill and they supported it, its passage. And now 
Mattel is the first company that got an exemption from the third-party testing because they were able to set up their own uh, testing facility that's supposedly firewalled off. Now, that's not because it's corrupt necessarily, but because the law was written in such a way that Mattel knew it would match the testing facilities, the testing practices they already had. So big business lobbying for and profiting from big government is happening but here. But maybe they're just saying, we want to protect the children too. We want to be good citizens. That's good PR. But there's more than one way to make safer toys. For one thing, you could pay really close attention to you, what you're putting in. You could manufacture it at home. You could make sure that you inspect your factories. Mattels are all over in China and Asia. They can't do that. So testing on the tail end makes more sense for them. Government comes in, makes a one-size-fits-all, says everybody has to do it the way Mattel does, whether you're making a million Dora the Explorer dolls or whether you're making four ch children's chairs. So in they lobby to get in the door first. When we return, crony capitalism and its role in the stock market crash and the bailouts. Both the recession and the bailouts have given capitalism a bad name. But this economist asks, why are the critics blaming capitalism? It is crony capitalism. That's next. Now shattering conventional wisdom, John Stossel. If you ask people, what caused today's 10% unemployment? What caused the recession? People tend to say, greed, Wall Street, capitalism, evil capitalism. The bailouts of the car industry and the big banks made people even angrier. They were egged on by activists like Michael Moore, who said capitalism has failed. This economic system they call capitalism has no moral or ethical core to it. Inhuman. It's only about how much money can we make. He made a movie about that that he titled Capitalism, A Love Story. It featured the bank bailouts. By spending just a few million dollars to buy Congress, Wall Street was given billions. Everything was being handled by the Treasury Secretary from Goldman Sachs. They had Congress right where they wanted them. This was almost like an intelligence operation. This is straight up capitalism. Boom. 